Today I'll be talking about uh, building an interactive CLI app in Elixir. And the reason that I'm doing that is mainly because of, oops, two things. Um, I'm currently maintaining a library called uh, Licensor, and it's an uh, Elixir library that crawls all the, your mix files and all the dependencies, mix files and license files, and compile them to, into a list so that you can uh, see what uh, licenses that you're using with your project. Uh, and also for my main uh, full-time job, I'm also developing an application that uh, is supposed to be a de decentralized application where we let our partners uh, deploy and set up uh, their own services. So uh, for, for me, CLI has been part of my, my, uh, my work for the past uh, year or two. And I feel that um, for my talk today, I, I want to make a little bit of a, a bold claim here that command line interfaces should be adopted uh, as a first class citizen in, in Elixir app. And this app is, uh, sorry, this talk is not going to be about like distributed systems or how to, to um, utilize a let it crash principles in Elixir. But I feel like CLI hasn't been really talked a lot about in, in terms of uh, in the Elixir ecosystem. So I want to bring this topic up. Uh, this talk will be four parts. Um, first, I will be talking about why CLI. Second part, I will be talking about how, what, uh, how the CLI could be helping developer experience. Yeah, so four parts, and I'll be starting off with why CLI, right? So first thing is CLI is really lightweight. You know, you, um, it's perhaps if you talk about user interface, it's probably, you would, I would say, it's the minimum viable interface <laughs> that you could do with your, an application. Um, it also can utilize US uh, OS and infra infrastructure level features. For example, you know you can do SSH, which uh, give you secure transport. You use OS login for that, and also you can use like groups and, and user permission to to um, authorize uh, users into into the command line interface. Um, it facilitates uh, reproducibility. Um, this is not the app per se, but there are so many cases where we. We do the well. We, we use the application, and then we get you know a support request saying, "Oh, this doesn't work. That doesn't work." And I have to go and ask, "Oh, what did you do? What data did you put in?" And it turns out that the best thing to do, the easiest thing to do, is, "Oh, can you open the the browser? Go to you know, inspect, and then can you copy the curl export out of the the request?" And with that, you get the full. Uh, in terms of data, and all, but also the invocation that, that happens as well. Uh, the next thing is it includes, uh, it increases uh, the composability of your application. Uh, if you have CLI, then there are chances. With CLI, you can also get better composability. Say, if you need to develop an uh, application and you need to output in terms of uh, JSON, if you do it without the CLI, you might prefer, or, or not the CLI, compliant way, then you might do you know, JSON formatting right away, put some coloring in there. But imagine if you just do your CLI application so that it's compliant and it works with other CLI uh, commands, then you could basically uh, output the most raw data that you can do, uh, pipe it into other commands. And one of the favorite uh, command that I would use with my application is run my command, pipe it, and it export it to uh, a JQ command. So you get a, a JSON format, and that's my preference, right? So uh, you, in when you work in a team, having lots of colleagues, or you uh, send your your release uh, Elixir app into uh, to to the partners or someone else to run it, then you can actually, you know, it's up to them how they want to compose the the application or, or the use case that they 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 do. Um, and lastly, CLI also what I, I I'm fascinated about it is that it allows you to, to do a lot of automation. Uh, this is a, a very short uh, snippet that I, I copied out from my Circle CI uh, config YAML file. So when you do, if you construct your, your Elixir application uh, CLI correctly, then it's very easy to put that into part of your CI CD steps. And it works well with other tools as well. So for example, in this case, you know, uh, during deploy, I check out. I wanted to run some command, which is like uh, a config, uh, config a secret in my app, and then once it runs, if it fails, notify Slack. If it's successful, we'll do something else. And that's that's really 
that's uh, really convenient when you, you do it in, in a compliant way. So when building a CLI, I find that although it's not useful for end users, they probably don't want to be running command lines, it's actually a really great tool for developer experience. And I took words from Justin Baker about two, three years ago, and he defined a developer experience as de delivering robust functionality, stable, speedy, and intuitive. And I believe that we all do that with Elixir apps already. Uh, and and there's, so, there's no reason why we, we do our backend code and you know, we do backend code in a very developer-friendly way where we, you know, we, you can, it's clean, it's extensible, but we don't do that with our interface. And CLI actually is a, good, a really good tool for that. Um, now, speaking of those benefits of CLI, how do you actually build one in, in Elixir? And it turns out that a lot of the, the, the tools that you need to build one is already in there. And the, of course, the most basic ones are if you want some, some output from your app, you do IO puts or IO write. If you want some inputs in there, you can get a prompt by using IO gets two, two arguments. There's a little bit of fanciness in there as well, which I'm actually quite surprised that they opened this as a public API docs so that we can, we can, so it's supposed to be stable, right? And uh, we can use it. Um, this is one of the, the module that I always put in into each of the app that I, I, I develop with CLI. So basically, you know, uh, with convenience and io.ansi, you could pass in a list and you can put in the formatting that you want in and it's actually just uh, an atom. So if you want a yellow color message, you just put a list of uh, yellow atom and then your message. And that's, that's, and then you can get the, the result in your command line. And one of the, the biggest thing, the, the biggest uh, sort of, I would say, mistake that people make when they, they develop a, a, a CLI application in Elixir is they try to parse the arguments themselves. And conveniently, Elixir actually has option parsing module there. And how does that work? So it's, it's a simple parse uh, function with two arguments. The first argument uh, would be you know, either the string, the argument string that you, you would like. And the interesting thing is that you can define all the parameters or all the flags that you want to accept as valid inputs into your, your, your system. And what you get out of this is actually a pattern of uh, three element tuple, where the first element of the tuple is the actual, uh, the, con the, the valid content that, that you're, you allow. The second element of the tuple is the string uh, of the argument that's, that doesn't, you know, is not associated with, with any facts. And the third one is actually all the, ar the, the rest of the arguments that it could not parse. So with this, you can use this three element tuple to pa continue to do pattern matching easily, and then you can develop a, a pretty much a proper CLI app out of this. And this is, um, if it plays, yeah. If, so this is an example of, of the CLI that we have been, been using or doing in, in my, my full-time job. So you can show up a prompt. You can do some password that doesn't show up. Uh, it's really useful for, for us seeding where we have a lot of data to see and want people to, to try play with it. And instead of just like seeding silently, we could output all of that they could copy it somewhere, or they could just start directly you know, clicking on the link there and put, uh, play with the, the information that, that they see on the screen. And all of this could be done through the command line without having to open a browser or figure out, like, oh, if the fire, firewall for, for my company blocks this, how do I set up on, on the, the server and all that. And so those are the tools, but what actually happens is a bit more complicated than just using those, those modules to, to, to compile your, to make your, your CLI app. The first thing is, I actually got a question yesterday whether, oh, I, am I using eScript for this? Um, it turns out that I, I don't. I actually, we, well, we didn't, at first when we re released the app, we didn't use distillery, so we have the you know, mix Phoenix server uh, running and all that, and it turns out when we moved to distillery, all the mixed tasks that we 
you know, it was working before all couldn't be used because you don't have mix in, in, in a release, right? And it turns out this theory actually has a feature where you can just set commands. Uh, for example, here I set the command name safe secret, and you can also put a shell script in there and then it will reference. So what, what actually works is, so then you can also put that uh, shell script to call the release itself. So you are calling back to the mix task that's uh, still available in your code base without actually having to have a mix as, as dependency there. So this is really convenient and it works well with uh, releases. Yeah, and, and so when you run, typical to, to you know, releases where you do your app and then uh, foreground, background, whatever, you can do my app, save secret, the arguments, and there you have the, the, the app. Um, the second thing that we stumbled upon is that we were not really aware of all the, the command line, well, the commands out there that are already using so many flags. And we, when we introduced new flags, um, we just came up with it. And it turned out to be a really bad experience for those that adopted the, the software because now they have to learn something new and they expect some flags to work. Why does, you know, dash dash version doesn't work? Why do we use like dash and with a, a capital V and all that? So it's it's very important to to use a common language that people are already using with your with, with the commands. And when in doubt, the easiest way is actually just to call um, run mix help and then see like what other mix projects are are using. And since we expect them to probably be using Elixir, they will probably be aware of all the commands that are available in the mix. Um, I.O. That's also one of the mistakes that we, we, we wish that we, we knew better when we started off doing the CLI. Um, we just basically, at the first, we just you know, I.O. puts everything and, and you know, we have the information message, error message, warning message, all in the one place. And that, even though it's fine for me as a developer, I get a lot of complaints from the DevOps team saying, you know, why, why is everything in, in, in the, the standard uh, output, right? So, and while we do this, Elixir is also um, very conveniently, you can specify which I.O. you want to, to output to. So in this case, um, I try I.O. puts info, and then I try I.O. puts uh, standard error. So, and you can also do the, the redirection here, and then it turns out that you, know, you, can, you can force that you only want to see the errors. So you can, you can do it from the command line without you know, having extra code in, in your system as well. Next thing is from the video screenshot that you see earlier. Um, you see that I had a few prompts in there asking for you know, the email and password. Although that looks pretty fancy and looks easy to use, that's not actually preferred by, by everyone because sometimes you already know the commands, you want to run it quickly, and you want it to run, say, like you want to copy the, the command in somewhere and copy and paste it and run it. And that doesn't work well when you do user prompts. So what I find out about making interactive CLI is not about you know, how you make users go along and type in one by one, but it's more about being very uh, responsive to, to inputs. Um, if there is something goes error, uh, you should let uh, you should let users put in as much input that that they they know already at once. And if there is any error, out return it as fa as soon as possible so that they could correct it. And the last thing is exit codes. This is also something that we didn't do at the start, and we got complaints again from the DevOps team because. The system sometimes stops, they sometimes crash, and we don't know what happened. It, they, all they all stop as a successful. Um, so one of the other things that was useful to implement is to use uh, system stop or system halt and use the correct return codes that are uh, recognizable by other commands. So for example, here uh, we have a so of course, exit status zero is success, and exit status one is for errors. And although there are like two of 55 codes that you can use, pretty much, pretty much mostly use zero and one as a start is good enough for, for troubleshooting. And so yeah, so we covered 
four topics. Um, I hope that at least if you're not planning to do any CLI commands now, uh, you know of the values that uh, you could be possibly be getting out of, of implementing a very basic uh, CLI for your, for your app. Um, there are tools available in Elixir that you can use, and there are also uh, practices that you know, I have already stumbled upon once, and I hope that you don't need to do us uh, to stumble upon that like me again. Um, there are further readings. Uh, this is not like the only talk or the the own, or if there's no article out there about Elixir, but if you uh, Elixir CLI, but if you want to build a command line, there is tutorials there. They they um, they contain stuff like how do you start the, the C, like your, your first CLI application, but also some cool other things that you can do, or even you can turn that into like a terminal uh, GUI application as well. So uh, these are, are good links to, to follow. And if you have any questions, and um, feel free to, to ask. And if you want to talk more, um, I'm, I'll be happy to, to talk more on this. All right. Thank you.